Um, yes, this is Digital Women's Archive North. Um, and I'm going to keep quite on script to try and sort of get, get through it, all my thoughts, really. So, um, first of all, really excited to be on this panel. I think it's got some really interesting uh, content. So, um, yeah, so Digital Women's Archive North then is an arts and heritage organisation, as says here on this slide, uh, delivering a programme of community based projects and research relating to gender, including culture, heritage, spaces, equality, social participation, and well being. DWAN, for short, unlocks women's histories and archives and collects cultural memories. We use feminist curatorial practices, both material and digital, to support women's services in Manchester, encouraging women's active citizenship and self-empowerment. We're currently in the early process of crafting a future digital women's archive as we explore new models for creative online curation and digital archive experience. DWAN's current research and development, supported by the Arts Council and the Ida Carroll Trust UK, involves a series of hack events bringing together artists, curators, archivists, digital technologists from Mad Lab, and women's community groups and activists to explore new approaches for digitally curating collections and digital spaces for women's cultural production. This is the first stage of creating an innovative online archive space built on a model of collaborative practice. Um, I just want to quickly say as well, the slides you're about to see do not necessarily correlate with what I'm saying. They're just interesting images. <laughs> um, a lot of them actually are taken from the Working Class Movement Library and also snippets from our um, manifesto from, for feminist archiving, which I'll, I'll come on to in a minute. So I'll just be randomly clicking through stuff. Um, so the archives involved in this particular project of building a digital women's archive north include the Co-op uh, College Archives, the Working Class Movement Library, the Pankhurst Centre, Archives Plus, the Race Relations Centre, Feminist Web's Archive, People's History Museum, the RNCM Archive, the Victoria Baths Archive, and the Museum of Transport, uh, Museum of Transport Greater Manchester Archive. Community workshops form a significant part of the research process. We aim to ensure collaborative and co-designing of the archive. We want to explore how women as collectives and individuals can potentially use the archive, how they would like it to function as a digital women's space for collecting and showcasing women's heritage, culture and creativity, how the archive can support women's campaigns and activism. Outputs from the research phase will include a series of co-created prototypes, aesthetic, immersive and interactive, we hope, uh, offering some ideas into how a middle... Uh, an, our ideas into how a model of material feminist archiving can offer solutions for digital feminist archiving and feminist organising more widely. So before continuing with the, with the uh, digital discussions, I'd like to take a few steps back uh, to explain how we got to this point, uh, which has really been about developing an underpinning model of feminist archiving, which sits within a wider context of feminist activism and organising. So the Digital Women's Archive North first developed to address the welfare of women and girls from the, from the perspective of a socially engaged heritage practice, responsive to key issues of hidden histories, women's education, violence and abuse, and skills development. The aim of Dwan is to create a model of feminist archiving that crosses between both welfare and heritage sectors, with the aims to offer inspirational stories, unlocking examples of radical women doing extraordinary things, to support literacy and education via the curatorial processes, offer opportunities for digital skilling and encouraging more women to enter the sector via heritage and archives, enable connectivity, collaboration and communication between and with other women. This year we published our first draft of a, of a manifesto for feminist archiving or disruption in Feminist Review. The manifesto is a creative and playful document and reimagines the archival process as we suggest women and men use the outline to begin rethinking their interactions with the archive and their input in for creating anew. It is neither definitive nor exhaustive and should be unpicked and rewoven by its user. The manifesto suggests three particular uh, methodolog methodological approaches for feminist archiving. The first is intervention, a process of generating new practices and approaches for intervention with existing archival material. Intervention methods are specifically concerned with access and interpretation. The second me uh, method is living, approaches of specifically connecting archive material with contemporary political and activist contexts. The living archive is one played out through the body and particularly concerned with individual engagement and voice. And the third method is the reimagined, a reuse and recycling of the archive material to recreate new archival forms. The, re the reimagined is concerned with creating new processes and archival structures. The manifesto calls for an active relationship with the archive, one that conceptually and physically rethinks best practice for managing and creating collections. 
The manifesto identifies five possible intervention points through selection, type, facilitation, storage and time and access. Documenting and collecting is a significant part of feminist archiving, but additional processes of rethinking access, interpretation, uses and creation of new structures are facets that will ensure a wider relevance and application. In feminist archiving, there are fundamental concepts that, that demand engagement. The first is the issue of how physical space and content of the archive is negotiated. The second is the issue of how materiality itself, the notion of how we perceive heritage. The manifesto offers a response to space and heritage that is consistent with Doreen Massey's position as a feminist geographer, that materiality and space is relational, active and living. Space and heritage are messy, unfinished processes of stories so far and performative meaning-making. The methods of disruption playfully suggested by the manifesto encourage participants, participants to take ownership of archival processes, of, to take ownership of how content evolves, how space is negotiated, how time is perceived and how heritage is performed. Feminist archiving then can support education, skilling and empowerment of women through ensuring a participatory and creative role in developing what archives and should be. Notably, women and girls' ownership of time, space and content is relevant outside the archival context. It is a process of building self-confidence and self-belief in an ability to shape and participate the socio-political processes that supposedly represent you and structure your everyday experience. Feminist archiving is not an isolated process and should, be, uh, and should result in evidence change to both infrastructure and wider collaborations. The archivist, if still considered in the singular, becomes a creative facilitator and storyteller rather than a gatekeeper. Participants, traditionally termed users, become empowered as creators of knowledge, not just passive receptors of existing practice. The methodologies that fall under intervention, living and reimagined should facilitate new dialogues and should shape different participatory structures. Feminist archiving then is perhaps ideologically closer to community social and youth work than it is to traditional archival practice. Feminist youth work strategies such as self-organising, collective actions, connectivity, participation, negotiation, the right to autonomy should underpin feminist archiving. Likewise, feminist archiving draws on the processes of socially engaged arts practice such as storytelling and conversation, sharing via action and emancipation. Feminist archiving wishing to impact socially also emerges from collaborative practice between different perspectives and sectors outside the heritage sector and embraces cultural practitioners as well as charity and public oriented services. Feminist archiving as a practice for evidencing absent or marginalized histories, production and participation is of course not new. Scholars such as Kate um, Eichhorn in the Archival Turn in Feminism in 2013 and feminist art historian and, and curator Amelia Jones extensively explore this area. Feminist individuals are collective since the 1960s and 70s have actively employed feminist archiving along accompanying discourses around rights and equality, filling in the gaps in history and ensuring that her stories are actively collected or rediscovered. Feminist archiving can be traced back further to collections we now describe to the feminist archival canon, canon emerging from social contexts where feminism and women's rights were low on the political agenda. Early examples of feminist archiving include the World Center for Women's Archives, 1935 to 1940 in New York, and the International Archives for the Women's Movement in Amsterdam, again 1935 to 1940. Both were founded to ensure the evidencing of their country's women's movements. Both organizations were established during a period of social, political, and economic struggle and heightened militarism, as well as a period marked by a sharp decline in feminist activism. Historically, then, it seems that our turn to feminist archiving is strongest during these moments of struggle, when a form of creative feminist activism is required to counter oppression. So Duane is interested in the practical application of feminist archiving in supporting social action against injustice and inequality. For Duane, feminist archiving is a circular process of creating the society we want to be evidenced. Feminist archiving should thus be responsive to the continued challenges faced by girls and women, as highlighted by recent reports by the Children's Society, Plan International, Frida, the Young Feminist Fund and Association for Women's Rights and Development, and the UK's own uh, Violence Against Women and Girls Strategy 2016 to 2020. Plan International states on its Global Girls Campaign website that girls continue to be the single most excluded group in the world. They face discrimination and abuse simply for being young and female. Girls and young women are often denied their right to education, to engage actively and equally in society, to take important decisions about their futures and bodies, to, injust to justice and equal opportunities, and to protection from gender-based violence. It is noted by the UN's Sustainable Development Goals that ending gender violence, ensuring gender equality, and enabling the particip 
participation of girls and women in education and political processes is crucial for sustainable economic growth and development. Notably, there are considerable overlaps between the objectives and challenges of feminist archiving and feminist organising more widely. It is in these intersections between theory and practice, heritage and the contemporary, that feminist archiving can play a valuable role in generating a set of tools for women and girls. So this is where we see the potential for grassroots cyber-feminist digital heritage and archiving as a form of activism, enabling girls and women's creative and cultural resistance and connectivity through data and content curation. For example, as a, as a technology of non-violence, we propose that digital women's archives have the potential to educate, empower and skill women for challenging the threats of violence. Archiving is a process of shaping knowledge and knowledge has the power to transform. By empowering individuals and groups to shape their presence in cultural heritage, women and girls can create a global, visible cultural resistance to the eradication or marginalisation of their stories and experiences, just one of the many ways girls and women are subjected to violence within oppressive societies. Additionally, cyber-feminist archives can offer educational spaces that offer up women's diverse heritage and histories whilst also enabling new voices and experiences to be evidence and sectors to connect. For example, the recent report from the Children's Society in 2016 demonstrated the increasing need to review pedagogical practice in supporting girls in schools to engage with issues of identity, self-worth and sexual knowledge. According to the report, age, uh, girls aged 10 to 15 years are becoming increasingly unhappy in the UK and the education sector needs to look to best practice outside its profession to youth, arts and heritage sectors for new ways to support young people with these complex issues. So to conclude then, uh, feminist archiving, both cyber and material, encourages the archive to live as a relational space of stories so far. Archiving is not a passive inherent, inherent process. To that end, feminist archiving can position itself as a model for ensuring future representation is actively shaped through, pre through, through present socio-political action that feeds back into the archive, both conceptually and physically. Likewise, uses of existing archives um, existing archives should respond to the activist call to develop creative methods for challenging inequality and discrimination. Building on the initial ambitions of the first International Archives for the Women's Movement by Rosa Manis in Amsterdam, 1935, digital technologies offer potential for a cyber-feminist archive to empower groups to connect, collaborate and communicate across geographical boundaries and barriers. We strive towards a utopian version of technology that can enable agency and support migrants, refugees, and internationally dis displaced persons who lack the basics of safety and security for self-organizing. Primarily, we hope a digital women's archive can respond to the call to action by the Young Feminist Fund and Association for Women's Rights and Development, as they say, for the global community to work together to create new spaces, new conversations, and a new world for young feminists everywhere. Thank you. Mm.